Oh God, am I gonna get on that thing? So to be honest, I can look at you and tell you this. Mm -hmm. I probably stole a couple gloves <laughs> in my life and I got busted. Sink, boys. Let's loosen up a little bit. Yeah. I'm grabbing a wedge if I still own one. Oh, I tried to collide. Yeah, we might need a few to loosen up. So you've admired a lot of swings, but we've all admired your swings <laughs> over the years. You've had an incredible career. Your accomplishments are, are long, and everyone loves Fred Couples. So where did it, where did it start for Fred well, with I mean, golf? Uh, first, I grew up in Seattle. Mm -hmm. We had a great life. I had great parents, but I got five dollars a day. I got three dollars and fifty cents to play golf, and I got a buck fifty for a burger and a coke mm -hmm. every day. My parents didn't need a babysitter. They knew where I was, and golf clubs back then I'll never were like seven dollars. Right. And it rained every other day in Seattle, so I every was spending year. more on golf clubs. And my parents would say, "I can't get you any more gloves." So to be honest, I can look at you and tell you this: mm -hmm. I probably stole a couple gloves in my life, and then I got caught stealing <laughs> gloves, and I said, "I'm not going to wear them anymore." And I said, "You know, my parents—they won't buy me anymore. I might just cuff a couple of these," and I got busted and then I just completely have never worn a glove. <laughs> but my swing has always really been the same. It looks kind of loose and long. I do try and have speed through the ball. And so when I played and did really, really well, a lot of times I drove the ball well and I was great with an eight, nine and wedge because I felt like the speed through the ball, even though it looks slow and even sometimes a little sloppy, but the pace through the ball really helped me hit at the right distance. Mm -hmm. So if you were to say, what were your strongest things? You know, obviously, we're, we're not a lot alike, but we're very close. If you putt well and I putt well, we're gonna be there. Yeah. And when we don't putt well, we have to rely on a lot more ball striking. But my distance control was really, really good. Hideki's go straight when he does right. that well, every time. That, you know? What is he thinking about? Oh, one-handed too, he's showing off. You can get him on fair game and talk to him about that because I okay. don't even understand. Let's hit a couple of wedges out here to this left blue one. Okay. I think it might be a little far for the wedge, but let's drop a couple in the same spot. So here he goes, just a little chip cut. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's a little jumper to get there. there so. Yeah, I'm on the green. You're warming up. You're still warming up. I though. am. Here's a beautiful lie. This one's sitting down, and that's that's pretty good. It's maybe a little bit in the rough. Mm -hmm. And this is where my brain, I can really judge, because I, I have a funky little swing. That here, you don't even need to try. You're going to make great contact with that. Okay. But here, it's, it's more on how it's going to come out. And so... For instance, if I was gonna hit a normal shot, I'd put this, the face square right. and I would hit it. And I don't know how it's gonna come out of there. So what I do is I open up and I'm actually trying to hit a little puff ball. But I know it's not gonna puff. And so that's- Right yeah, on the money. Right on the money. And, and if I hit a normal with a beautiful lie, mm -hmm. Then I use my natural swing and it'll go the same distance. And that's an art to me. Yeah. Whereas you Re play. Reading the lie. Reading right. the lie. Yeah. And that is something. And that's playing a shot. Correct. Right. Through your career, you were being aggressive, but hitting a, like a controlled cut. Correct. But you were making what you felt was an aggressive swing. So through the career, like as you stand over the ball, have you had consistent swing thoughts? <laughs> I mean, I've had a million of them. You know, they can change you know, from day to day. What what's uh, been your go-to? I mean, my go-to. Uh -huh. So let's say at the seventh, the eighteenth hole at Riviera, I hit a good drive and I got a cut in there. Mm -hmm. 
Most of my shots are a cut. So I'm aiming left, which I do easily. And now I'm just thinking that Paul Marchand is standing right here. Right. And I honestly, I'm, I'm going through that pretty firm for me. It's pretty. Is it because the cameras are on you? Oh putting yeah. It? Oh yeah. There he is. Yeah. What do you got, Scotty? I got five. I'm going to go five iron. Okay. I need a four to be anywhere okay, near you, but on. I'm going to hit a five. There he is. You went to college in Houston. I did. Yeah, with a pretty famous teammate, roommate. I went to U of H with Jim Nance. There you go. Yeah. And he's, of course, got the iconic line. Yeah. Hello, friends. Yeah. Hello, friends. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, friends. <laughs> and hello, my friends. Jim Nance here. Blaine McAllister was one of my roommates who won five Whoa, you times. you guys had an unbelievable yeah. team. Yeah, and then my, my roommate was John Horn and, and then Jim Nance. And Jim really helped helped out in school. He was on our golf team as a freshman, mm -hmm. but uh, he, he wasn't, you know, real good, but he could play. And um, he got us to class. He helped me stay eligible, which as you know, it seems easy, but it's not when you're no. in, right. Just when all I just want to play golf and. I just wanted to play golf. Yeah. When we were in school, he would always play, you know, us winning at the master. And then when it happened, I mean, you know, I completely lost it. <laughs> I've lost it before, but when we were down in Butler Cabin, I just couldn't, I couldn't believe it. Yeah. And he said it was the hardest nine holes he's ever had at any golf tournament. I'm sure. It's amazing. So you went to UNLV because? I, I felt like it was my chance to get out of Australia. And uh, we had really great programs back there. We were producing a lot of good players, but I just felt like I want to get to the PGA Tour one day, and this is a step to America. And then you turned pro. About a year and a half after yeah, so I Yeah, so you were 20? I was 19. I think I was 19. 19, yeah. yeah. Let's hit a couple more so you get okay. loose for a driver, because we yeah. got to get you to hit a driver. Yeah, I can handle a couple drivers. And you've had some such iconic moments out on the golf course. Like you have this sense for the dramatic, you know, your whole long putts and you're running around the green winning the President's right. Cup <laughs> right. and hitting great shots. Was there anything in that moment that where you told yourself something different when it was down to the one putt or the one shot where you had to throw it in there to three feet that you've you done know, a million times? I think is we look at so many things that aren't perfect and I try and get those away I mean, like when you wanted at Augusta, you know, you do that, but you don't do that all the time. No. It, something takes over. When I made that putt, it was so long and yeah. flowy. Oh, yeah. And then I just took the guy's hat off and threw it in the air because it was a team thing. <laughs> and, and the American team in celebration. But I would never take but my it, caddies no. off. But one of, the, one of the weird things about golf is, let's just say you're on the 71st hole, right? And I'm one ahead of you and I got a five iron over water, and I hit it 15 feet left of the hole, beautiful shot. You make a par and I make a par, now I go to 18, I gotta continue to keep doing this, right? I gotta now hit a better drive than you, I gotta make sure you don't birdie, and I make a hard par on 18 at Riviera, which is brutal, and then you win a tournament, and you're so like, ah, oh, but, there's no time to jump up and down. No, I find it hard to come back down if I jump up and down on the 71st hole. Correct. There's a time, I think the time to jump up and down for me yeah. is when it's all over and I make that 40 foot snake. Correct. And that's it. I don't I'm have the, to hit another shot now. I'm the exact same. Yeah. Let's all get right. to the big stuff. Okay. Friend. Oh God, am I gonna get on that thing? Okay. Yeah, no, okay. I wanna get a chuckle. I'm yeah. gonna bet I get one, 107. Yep. Okay, that's as good as that. That's beautiful. 266. <laughs> 299, Brad. Seriously? That's what. It's 266 upside down, but it's 299. Oh, another straight one. 301. 301. <clears throat> can I quit, please? Yeah. Benny, that's can I amazing. Quit? That's awesome. <laughs> that's okay. good. Kidding. 
This is the fair game, 15 at Augusta. Uh-huh. You can't yep. pull it no. because you get behind those trees. That's right. But what shot do you hit off that? I go, I tee it super low. Okay. Have that and just swing. Yeah. I don't try and squeeze it, but the low tee just kind of squeezes it. And you're, yeah. So aim at the right tree. Yeah. And just, and just peel swing it. it. Yeah, yeah, swing from right there. Yeah, there it is. 180, 312. <laughs> That's 310. 322. 320, see, I'm not even close. 180. All right. <laughs> Thanks, man. So Thanks so much. This, is this much longer than You're yours? You're good, yeah. That's the only You're way good. you can get it. Where's okay. the first tee? Thanks, man. Okay, thank you. It was amazing.